Good morning, boys and girls. Today is Friday, so we're going to start our Friday off fun. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout, let's read, let's read. If you're happy and you know it, shout, let's read, let's read. If you're happy and you know it, shout, let's read, let's read. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, let's do all three. Let's read. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Let's read. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Let's read. All right. You've been begging me for like a whole song to read, so I can't wait to read. And this morning's book I picked for you is called Bippity Bop. Barber shop. Well, that's a lot of bees. Bippity bop barber shop. And when an author starts several words together in a book, they call that alliteration. So bippity bop barber shop. Hmm. It's kind of like bippity boppity boo. That's what it reminds me of. But let's read about shop this morning. What do we think this little boy in this picture using your eagle eye is going to do? Hmm. All right, well, let's see if you were right. This is written by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley, and it is illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And when I read this book, I fell very much in love with this because I think you're gonna like it. And some of you might can relate to this story. So let's get started. Early Saturday morning, Daddy comes to wake me up with our secret knock. Bippity be bop bop, bippity be bop bop. Yup, little man. Daddy pokes his head into my room. I'm up, I say excitedly and jump up out of bed. I can hardly wait. It's going to be my first haircut at the barber shop today. Mom, Mama and my sister, Kenya, are still asleep. Daddy and I have the house all to ourselves. Quietly, Daddy and I dress in matching blue jeans and gym shoes and then head out the house. We turn into onto Main Street and stop at Jack's Sweet Shop. Daddy orders gooey cinnamon roll and black coffee and a glazed donut and chocolate milk for me. Miles is getting his first haircut at the barber shop today, Dad tells Mr. J. Is that so, Mr. J asks, leaning over the counter. I'd nod, yes. He, he says, this calls for a celebration. I make your ch milk a double. Mr. J pours chocolate milk into a tall cup. Be brave, little man, he says, as he hands it to me. We eat as we walk. Up ahead, I see the green and yellow awning and the white letters on the window that say, Seymour's Barbershop. It has, next to the door is a short white barber's pole. It has red stripes with curl and swirl around and a strange fish swimming in a sea of white. And there is Mr. Seymour in the window with his wild gray hair 
dusting off his big shiny chair. Mr. Seymour has been Daddy's barber since Daddy was a kid, kid like me. Now, he's my barber, too. Inside, the shop is crowded. Daddy stops to whisper something to Mr. Seymour. And then, we walk to the back of the shop to find a seat. Hey there, Charles. Hey there, little man. What's going on? People call out as we pass. First haircut? One of the men asked me. I nod yes. Nothing to it, he says. Just gotta be brave. All these people are telling me to be brave, but I don't know exactly what that means. What does brave mean, Daddy, I ask. It just means you're not afraid, Daddy says. When we sit down, I practice being brave. As Daddy and I wait our turn, we watch two men playing checkers. Slap! One of the men slams down his checkers on the board. King me! He shouts with his arms raised high. Another group of men is clustered around the television in the back of the shop watching a basketball game. Come on, man! Shoot the ball! What are you waiting for? Pass it! Pass it! Foul! That was a foul! The ref must be blind! Woo! That boy can fly! One man cheers when his favorite bas player finally makes the basket. Jazz music, loud voices, and, la and the buzz of clippers and the soft, sweet, sweet whisper of scissors skimming loose hairs from a freshly cut hair. I look at the men in the row of the chairs in front of me and I can see their faces in the long mirror that runs across the entire line of the shop. The, the man in Mr. Seymour's chair is getting his head shaved. Take it all off, he says. A patch of sunlight gleams right on top of his bald head. Another man has thick, long dreadlocks. He's getting a shave with a razor. When he leans all the way back in the chair, his locks almost touch the floor. The next man is getting his hair cut low all around. The clippers go back and forth, dipping and gliding across his head, making a smooth waves that ripple through his hair. In the last chair, there's a kid, a little older than me, getting his big curly afro trimmed, just a little off the top and the sides, he says. But none of the styles I see Look like me. After a while, Mr. Seymour points Daddy towards Daddy and me and calls my name. Me? I look at Daddy and then I look at Miss, Mr. Seymour. And I look at Daddy again. You go first, Miles, he says, and pats me on the shoulder. Be brave, little man. I can hear my heartbeat in my ears and my knees feel wobbly. I stand up and I walk over to that chair. Mr. Seymour helps me up. The chair is so high. Then he drapes a big wide cape over me to catch those loose hairs. What style would you like for your first haircut, little man? Mr. Seymour asks. I shrug my shoulders. I don't know. Mr. Seymour shows me a poster hanging on the wall with pictures of all kinds of different styles. But I don't see any that look like me. I take one more look around the shop where I see Daddy. And I know right away which style I want. Cut low on top, shave cleaned all around. 
just like his. I whisper to Mr. Seymour and he goes to work. Mr. Seymour takes out his pick. He picks my hair until it's fluffy and stands up high. Then, with his scissors, he begins to cut my hair, just like Mama used to do at home. But when he finishes with the pick and scissors, I hear him turn the clippers on. My, my heart starts beating fast again. Will the clippers hurt? What if Mrs. Seymour accidentally cuts off my ear? The loud buzzing noise is coming closer. Then I feel a tickle creeping up the back of my neck. I get so scared, I duck down as low as I can go in the chair and throw the cape over my head. I peek out from under the cape when Mr. Seymour turns the clippers off. Daddy is squatting besides me. I tried to be brave, but I didn't know how I say with tears in my eyes. You know, I was scared when I got my first haircut, Dad says, and wipes my tears away. You were, I say with my eyes open wide, and Daddy nods. But I tell you a trick. Pretend you're a giant so tall your head touches the sky. And the buzzing of the clippers is just the sound of the airplanes zooming by. Or maybe you're a superhero saving the earth from a swarm of killer bees. Try it. I promise you won't be frightened anymore. But, so I close my eyes and think about the giants and my favorite superheroes. But I can't picture in any of them getting a haircut. Then I remember watching my daddy get his haircut. The way he sits up tall and closes his eyes halfway. Like he doesn't have a care in the world. And I think about how brave Daddy is, and I get brave too. When Mr. Seymour turns the clippers back on, I imagine that I have Daddy's long legs and wide shoulders, and I sit up straight like Daddy, who I still squeeze the arms of the chair tight. And when Mr. Seymour is through, there's a brand new me standing in the back of the mirror, staring in the back of the mirror. Mr. Seymour rubs a dab of sweet smelling blue aftershave on my face and the back of my neck and it, and it feels like a cool breeze. Then he dips the brush in powder and gently sweeps it over my neck. Daddy takes his seat in Mr. Seymour's chair and when Mr. Seymour asks him how he wants his hair, Daddy says he wants his hair cut just like me. Daddy wants to look like me. When Mr. Seymour is finished, Daddy and I smile at each other in the mirror. You sure we're not twins, Daddy asks, raising one air eyebrow. On the way out, some other... Some of the other men in the shop hold their hands up for high fives. Looking sharp, young man, they say. Guess I can't call you little man anymore, Miles. You're one of the big boys now, Mr. Seymour says, and he shakes my hand. See you next time. I hum a happy, proud song as we leave Mr. Seymour's shop. Bippity bop. Bippity bee bop bop. Dad picks up the tune and we walk to the rhythm of our music. Two cool cats side by side. And I would add to that, they have some pretty cool lines, don't they boys and girls? I hope you enjoyed our morning story today. And tonight, I want for you to remember that today is Flashlight Friday. So where is Miss Underwood going to build her tent and reach you with her flashlight? You'll just have to tune in tonight to see. I love you from the tops of your heads to the bottom of your feet. And I hope that you enjoyed this story as much as I did sharing with you. 
Now, we forgot one thing this morning, and that's my virtual hug, and we cannot forget my virtual hug because this is what makes me happy. So, ready? One, two, three, hug. Oh, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Oh, that was a good hug. And for those of you that don't like hugs, double high fives right here. Woo! Let's do it twice. One more. All right, because it's Friday and we're having fun. All right, I can't wait to see you. Goodbye. Summerwood, um, if you haven't already, uh, please make sure that you click that subscribe button right there so that you're notified when new videos are loaded. If you like um, the videos and you want to continue reading and learning with Miss Underwood, thank you. Look forward to seeing you and subscribe. Do it now so you don't forget. Subscribe right there. Click that button. Thanks.